Now, one of the massive challenges that we face now is artificial intelligence. Fake news, lies, but through artificial intelligence. It's caught the certainly the academic world with uh, the impact of, uh, I think it's GGI and, and all of those uh, elements of artificial intelligence. And it actually now, I worry, can hit and can impact on the criminal justice system. What if somebody creates artificial intelligence to actually make up evidence, evidence that's not true, but it's just literally made up. And what we now know, of course, through uh, through chat GTP and those types of artificial intelligence, it is brilliantly accurate in terms of how it looks, how it presents itself. I think we've seen in the recent days how uh, a foreign news network even had a you know, uh, an artificial intelligence news reader uh, reading. So it is taking, it's coming into our lives and, and I worry that it uh, it can have such a huge impact. Have you started to see artificial intelligence or are there elements in terms of the work that you're doing and the colleagues you speak to where there is perhaps a fear of this coming in? Um, I think... I think with any new technology, I mean, I think the artificial intelligence is incredibly powerful, but like any technology can be abused, it can also be a benefit. Um, so, yes, I think I share some of the concerns that the artificial intelligence could be abused massively. I think it's about recognising what the artificial intelligence can do, which can be really difficult to keep ahead of. Um, so one of the, the, the example in the academic world, um, we recognise that people are using chat GTP to write their essays. So all we have to do is put in um, the title of their essay and it's produced um, 3,000 words or how many words you asked it for. Um, but now we know the student can do that. We can look at it and we can actually learn patterns from chat GPT. So I've looked at it myself and I think I can recognise patterns when it's being used. Right. Um, but in terms of the fringes, I've not seen any evidence of AI being used for nefarious means just yet. I'm sure that it's... Um, cases in digital fringes, which is well outside my area of expertise. But where artificial intelligence potentially impacts in us is interpreting evidence mm. and, and perhaps making our lives easier and using artificial intelligence as a tool. So, for example, one of my PhD students is um, doing a PhD in the use of artificial intelligence for pattern recognition um, in blood stain pattern analysis. And so uh, we've been using um, artificial intelligence generated by Microsoft. Um, what you do is pattern recognition. So what you do, you put in a load of images. So what we do, they put in images of airborne versus contact. And then on the images, we say, this is airborne, this is contact. And then we train the AI to recognise them. And then we give it an unknown and say that this thing looks more like airborne than it looks like contact. And it gives you the percentage confidence. Uh, so that's actually really quite useful. Mm. Um, so that's been um, quite good. But then... The question then is, how much do we trust that? And part yeah. of the problem with that is part of the problem with artificial intelligence. Is we don't know how it came to that decision. Um, so it's a bit very much like me going to court and said, right, um, Joe Blog did it. How do you know? Just trust me, I'm a friend of science, Joe Blog did it. That would never be accepted in court, and quite rightly. Um, and it's the same with AI. So you put a question into AI, it gives it an answer. How did it come up with that answer? and so we don't necessarily know. So we could use AI or machine learning for investigative purposes, you know, they could try and use to identify a suspect, but I suspect there'd be a very, very long time before it could be used in court, because I think one of the important things in court is a human that gives evidence. I'm not sure how the court would appreciate an AI or artificial intelligence giving evidence. And no. I certainly wouldn't like to be convicted um, based on AI um, testimonial. Absolutely not. So, Graham, fascinating chat. We could talk all day, but but what's around the corner? What's the next advances in forensic science that we should be looking out for or being worked on? I think I think what's coming up with um, the better the better appreciation that um, interpretation needs working on. Um, I think there's a better appreciation about how we communicate the results to the jury and how the jury understand it. Um, so I know there's um, a few research calls out for funding to explore things like DNA transfer and persistency. So if DNA is there, how likely is it there from direct transfer or how likely has it been moved around? And, and a lot of research looking around, 
the interpretation is in I think there's a lot more focus going on about how the evidence got there, um, which is very much overdue. And as we just talked about, is the um, use of artificial intelligence and forensic science as, as a tool is something that's coming forward. And I think one of the things that we'd like to see to be looked at is the temporal aspect of how long could the DNA be in there? Is the, is the blood fresh or is it old? Um, how how long has that body been there for? Um, and I think they're um, quite crucial questions that have yet to be answered.